Marvin Higby is with us today. He's uh, been working with top-level network marketing companies for three decades or more. He's a president, CEO, CEO, and more of his own companies. And he's been advising them on compensation, sales and marketing strategy, compliance, international logistics. And uh, in the note he wrote me, it says that he can walk out his door and in 30 minutes be at the doorstep of several network marketing companies that make a billion in sales. So that's very promising for the future for LifeWave. So I'll turn the call over now to Francis and Marvin. Thanks for being here, Marvin. Thank you very much. What, what a great pleasure to have my dear friend Marvin on here. Uh, the one thing I'll tell you, aside from his success, is uh, Marvin Higby is a true friend. I know his family, and um, you can see why he's such a quality man, because he comes from really good stock. And um, he has uh, uh, just been there for me uh, and a number of times, and he's a, he's a true friend, so I'm so happy to have him on the call. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great, Francis, and I'm really excited to be on the call with you today, uh, mostly because of our friendship that we've developed over the years. Uh, I have a great amount of appreciation for who you are. Uh, I also know how, how wonderful Onyx and Kathy have, have been to you in your, in your life. Uh, we've talked about Onyx, I think, several different times, long before you got involved with, with LifeWave and what a, a positive influence that she's been. And then to be able to bring you this opportunity with LifeWave and, and help, uh, help you to be successful is just a, is such a great thing. That's what this industry is really all about. It's about those relationships like ours and like that one that you have with, with Onyx and then in turn with Kathy. Yeah, that's a good point, uh, Marvin. I'm going to ask you a few things about that. Um, you've been CEO, president, executive vice president, COO of lots and lots of companies in the last 31 years. And uh, January 11th, I start my 35th year. I'm feeling pretty old, buddy. That's <laughs> uh, all in your head. <laughs> yeah, right. It's only a number, but it's a big number. So uh, in any case, um, so I invited you on this call because you keep your ear to the ground. You're a very astute and savvy guy. Um, what, what do you think made me join LifeWave uh, as a corporate executive? What do you think? Well, I think there are a couple of different things that I see with LifeWave. I, I was introduced to LifeWave, oh gosh, back in 2008, I think it was, sometime, sometime right around there, maybe a little bit before that. And, and I saw even then, um, I saw their great products and, and other things. So obviously, I know you're a product person, uh, Francis, and I know that yes. you're the, I know that that means a lot to you. Quality of product is a critical thing that you always examine. Anytime you're taking a look at any opportunity, that's one of the things that has to be spot on for you to even be able to represent it and talk about it. So I know that the product is part of it. I know that the, the, I saw the marketing strategies that they were, that they were using back then when they were, uh, Suzanne Summers was, was very involved with the, the business at the time. And, and I know that that, that was really exciting for a lot of people, what she was doing and her putting her name to behind a product and the company and, and the things that were going on. I also saw the, the caliber of the people that were leading the company. And I had a chance actually to go in and sit down and talk with uh, some of their top management at the time and, and discuss with them uh, what their objectives were and what their vision was for the company. And it's a company that had a great vision. Uh, and look where you are today. Look at, look at this quiet company that isn't out there doing all the rah-rahs, isn't out there getting in trouble with the FTC like so many. I don't know if any of you saw the recent uh, list of companies that, that got in trouble with the FTC for making inappropriate claims regarding their products with uh, COVID and, and other things. But, but here's your company that probably has some, some wonderful technology, obviously, but they're not out there doing those kinds of things because they're not a company that's going to take advantage of a situation uh, 
to the to the detriment of of our industry. Honestly, uh, they're a company that does it just by solidly moving forward and being who they are and representing when 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 people use their products, they have the experience. Can I share my pro one of my product experiences that I had with LifeWave, Francis? Oh, sure. Sure. You know, Absolutely. I was in Mexico. I was in Mexico and I was at um, a pyramid. And I and while I was at this pyramid, we walked up to a place and it's kind of an, it's a, a really remote place that hardly anyone really goes and visits. And, um, and so the pyramids aren't fully developed like a lot of the ones like Teotihuacan or Chichen Itza down by Cancun. These were really still kind of undeveloped. And we walk up a trail and we come to a place where they have this picture of a guy that's called the Volador. Volador in Spanish means the flyer. And he, we were watching everything and looking at this beautiful uh, carving of this, of this volador, this flyer. And what these voladores did, what they did were they were the runners that would run between the different communities and they would, and they would take messages from one community to the next. So they were kind of like a, a postal system, kind of, in a way. And, and while we were standing there, this big wasp came down and stung me on the arm. And it was really an ugly black wasp and it hurt like crazy. Fortunately, I was with a person who absolutely loves LifeWave. And she carried some of the patches in her, in her purse and she immediately pulled out. And I can't remember what the name of it was, but she put it on the back of my neck and directly over the, the, the sting. And it was amazing within seconds. And the, I, I don't know if you've ever been stung by a wasp and one of these black wasps, oh, yeah. but it hurts. <laughs> and she put this, she put this on top of it. And within minutes, within five minutes, everything began to calm down. And then I began to think, well, maybe it's just the sting was going away. So I took the one off of, not off my neck. I left that one on, but the, the one that she had put on my arm, I took it off and within five minutes it was starting to throb and hurt really bad again. So I immediately put it back right then. That's one of the great things about, about the product is you can actually remove it and then reapply it. And so I just reapplied it right directly on and within seconds again, the pain was gone. So I don't, I don't know exactly everything about that transdermal uh, technology and everything, Francis. I'm not an expert on it. All I know is that it worked. <laughs> And I'm really was grateful for it. It was it saved my day. Wow, I I didn't know about that. That's very <laughs> interesting, Marvin. You know, I mean, um, the patches are quite phenomenal, and I'd say they're about 20 years before their time. So um, for us to go out there and um, and be pioneers is a great thing. You've been a pioneer a number of times uh, in companies. Um, you know, new companies that are opening up and because of your track record and your reputation, people uh, have wanted you to uh, lead the charge. What's the downside of that? And what's the upside of a, a company like LifeWay being around for 15 years? Well, I think, I think that there are a couple of things. One of the biggest upsides for LifeWave is that, that you have people who now know what they're doing. When you first start a company, the people who are starting the company don't know what they don't know. I know that sounds like a really obvious kind of a statement to make, but in network marketing, it's critical. And one of the things that happens with most companies, and when you've gone 15 years and you have that experience, then, then they, they can use that experience to take the company even further. But when they're a brand new company, oftentimes what, I'm, what I do and where, where I end up being is that the people don't know and so they don't want to listen to somebody who has experience really and they don't value that experience because they think that, no we can do it a different way the interesting thing about our industry is it's really not rocket science not any aspect of it is that critical but it's human relationships and learning how to honor relationships is critical and obviously look at what's going on with LifeWave you guys you guys have got a really nice little boom going on there and it's because of the relationships like we, between you and Kathy and, and Onyx and, and that, that's the, the field side of things. But then there's the relationship of the company delivering products that really are impactful and that work and delivering systems where you can track and see what's going on. 
all of those things come with that kind of an experience. And so after 15 years, you pretty much have all the bugs worked out. And now what you have to do is just take that opportunity and grow with it. I mean, I've watched you, Francis, and in less than a year, I, gosh, was it a year ago that you had your operation? Uh, and your yeah, heart? it was actually about 14 months. Yeah, it was, well, you know, it wasn't just a very serious heart operation, but I also had my gallbladder out. I also had cataract surgery. So it was and 2019 was quite a year, Marvin. <laughs> I know, and you you were you were in tr not just in trouble physically, uh, with your with your health and some of those challenges. Which by now I t I see pictures of you on the online, and I haven't I haven't seen you in person since then. But I see pictures of you, and you just look like you again. But what's even more impressive is that you were you were in a really desperate situation financially. And LifeWave has come along and through the, being blessed by your relationship with Onyx and with Kathy and with your, your entire team that you have, and of course, the organization that has come and joined you, you, you've been able to change your life completely. And that is the, that's the, the amazing thing about this industry is that how many people can really turn around their life and their lifestyle in a year when they go from a desperate situation where you don't even know how you're going to pay for all these hospital bills and everything else to a position where you're actually making enough money where you can live in a beautiful home and, and pay for health insurance. It's a different world. Yeah. That's it, that, that is so well said, Marvin. Yeah. It was a, a very scary time for me and I had a lot of prayers and I had a lot of energy being sent to me, uh, an enormous amount of outpouring of love, and thanks for your support during that time, too, Marvin. Um, you know, you really get to know who your friends really are when you're in dire straits. And uh, now I'm much, much, much more sensitive to people when they, when they need help now. Because, um, you know, not everybody has the same kind of relationships I've had through the years. I'm, I'm so grateful. But... Um, yeah, I mean that's a that's a nice fresh perspective for somebody who's actually not in LifeWave and has not been a corporate executive to be able to hear from a man like this that's been the head of many companies, many large companies, talk so um, positively about LifeWave. And man, if I had a magic wand right now. I would wave it and say, Marvin Higby is executive vice president of um, Latin America for LifeWave. And I would love that because uh, um, there's a few friends on the network marketing corporate side that I can count on one hand. And Marvin's, Marvin's the thumb, okay? You know, he is, uh, he is one of these guys that... Uh, if you're fortunate enough to have him as a friend, uh, you're, you, 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 life gets better. And we bounce things off each other all the time, and, and it's, it's been really great. Um, I think maybe, unless you have anything else to add, Marvin, maybe we can uh, open up the call and see if people have some questions for you. Sure, I'd be happy or to. Or questions for me. Okay, great. I, Is, uh, Katrina, do you want to open up the call so people can ask Marvin some questions? I think that means yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm unmuted, everybody. Uh, Thank anybody you. This is Carol. Yes. Go oh, Carol listen, talk about, talk, talk about powerful uh, field people, people on... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm happy to meet two powerful folks. Carol D. Francisco, meet Marvin Higby. Hi, Carol. Thank you. Hi, Marvin. Nice to hear you. Thanks for your comments. Um, I've been in the industry a while, so I, I'm, I'm asking for your perspective. What do you think it is that makes network marketing so powerful? Uh, well, here, here's the... Here's the thing that I love personally, Carol, about network marketing. Network marketing is one of those things, and it's really based on a really simple pr principle, that as you lift other people, you lift yourself. 
as you as you help other people to be successful or you help other people achieve their health of goals or objectives you're also you're also lifting your own your own self at the same time to me i call that i call that compassionate capitalism i know that's a word i know that's a word that was actually or a concept that was kind of coined by um uh, Richard DeVos from Amway. So clear back even then, he kind of came up with the, the concept of ca compassionate capitalism. But to me, the meaning of it is, is that we, you know, in, in most industries in, in the world, to, to be successful, you do it by climbing on the backs of everybody else. You, 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 you win by, by um, uh, defeating basically somebody else, by being smarter or by having a better concept or whatever it is in network marketing you get to leverage everybody's strengths to lift us all and and really it's kind of the concept that we that we use as almost trite but the concept of a rising tide raises all ships um, network marketing is the only place and it's the only economic system that i am aware of that allows you to do that where where you literally can raise everybody up by being successful and by helping others be successful. Thank you. That well said. Thank you. That's 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 empowering. I appreciate that. Powerful and compelling. Wonderful uh, explanation. Couldn't have done it better myself. Um, I guess there's some other people out there that would maybe like to say hi to Marvin and. Uh, Ask ask a question about the industry. Hi, this is Kathy. Nice to meet you, Marvin. Hey, Thanks. Kathy. Thank you for your time. Hi, Kathy. Um, I love what you just said about network marketing, and I'm really pretty new to it, and um, I'm just starting to get some information. And but in coming. To my adult years in hearing people talk about network marketing here and there how did network marketing come to have from my experience of what I've heard a bad, such a bad name what do you think it comes for that no nope. you know what I think I think honestly if you focused on anything in life Kathy you would find all of the chinks in the armor so take religion you right. can you can find people in religion who've done horrible things in the name of religion, and does that make the religion bad? No. Does it make religion bad? No. It make that person a bad person. We've had plenty of bad people in network marketing. The other thing that I think is a challenge is that sometimes we make it seem like it's too easy. You know, you just get in, get in, and and um, you're going to have everybody's going to build it for you. Or you don't really have to do more than sign up two people or something like that. You know, it's, we, we make it sound like it's this easy, easy thing and it's work and you have to approach it like a, like a job, like anything that you're going to do in life. You have to be willing to put it, put in the kind of effort that you need to. It's not, it's not an investment. It is a, it is a, it is a job that you do for yourself. And the difference between an employee and an entrepreneur is that an entrepreneur is willing to work 18 hours a day to avoid working eight hours a day for somebody else. And, and that, and there's some truth to that. It's not, it's not that it's necessarily that much time, but gosh, I know some of you networkers who are on the phone until well all hours of the night you'll work clear through the night sometimes uh, especially as you build international organizations and and i'm so impressed by the the kind of effort and it's not it's not um, it's not an easy easy thing to be truly truly successful in network marketing but it's really rewarding and when you have that experience of seeing things begin to be leveraged your experience, leveraging other people's experience, et cetera, it's, it's powerful. But does that mean that there aren't people who come in and take advantage? Well, sure there are. Uh, are there people who think that it was gonna be, uh, uh, you know, I don't have to do anything and I'm gonna get something for nothing? Yeah, that we, we kind of, unfortunately, a lot of people have sold the industry that way. And so when you create those expectations, and and then they fail so miserably and expectations and reality totally clash 
there's no way that you're not going to have people unhappy and it's going to create a bad name for our industry. And so we have regulatory agencies step, step in and say, Hey, you can't say those things. You can't do that because you're, 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 you're creating false expectations that are leading people to put their money and their energy and their effort into something that's not going to produce it the way that you have described. That's, that's what I think has hurt our industry. Well, thank you for very much for that, for that perspective. Um, thank you. It's a very, very um, powerful, compelling um, story you just told, um, Marvin. It's, and it's important to keep that story uh, in front of us because we do, we do find people with very, very bad experiences because they've met a desperate person. They've met a person who is uneducated. Uh, they've met a person who's inexperienced. They've met a person who's a manipulator or whatever. And, and you find those kind of people in life, not just in network marketing. And you've also had companies out there that had crappy products. I mean, there's so many things, but network marketing is just like every other industry. It's got people who wear white hats and people who wear black hats. And you and I, in the last bunch of years, have had this conversation uh, plenty of times, right, Marvin? Oh, that's true. Yep. I, I, I think that, you know, you can't help but be in the industry and know both. Uh, I, I, feel, I feel really honored that after being in this industry for 31 years as an executive, I still have a really good reputation. There are a lot of people who don't. So I'm very pretty impeccable that, pretty, that I do. Pretty <laughs> impeccable. Yeah. Yeah. No, pretty impeccable reputation and, and you, and you earned it and you deserve it. And that's why I say on, on, on one hand, I could, I can count all my friends, especially on the uh, uh, corporate side of network marketing. Because I, I've seen, I'm going to tell a little tale out of school here, Marvin. I've seen Marvin leave two companies because he found out that the owners and the corporate executives, other than himself, were being unethical, immoral, and doing things that were not good for the distributors. I've, it, I, myself, I've seen him do that. And so you don't find many people do that, that have that kind of ethic. And, and that kind of morals uh, inside their heart to get up and leave a way of making a living because they don't like the way, you know, a company is operating and taking advantage of distributors. So I got, you know, I take my hat off to you, my, my dear friend, for, for you doing oh, yeah. that because I've watched you do it. Well, you know what, Francis, we all have to stand for something. We don't stand for something where we stand for nothing. And, and we can't, none of us can stand around and, and watch people be mistreated. I mean, hopefully, hopefully you can't, I, I hope. Um, you can't stand watching people be mistreated or abused or when you know that, that people, people really don't care, care about the people that are, that are building a business and, and working their hearts and bringing all of their currency, which is their relationships to the table and spending that currency with the company when the company doesn't care about them at all. And I've seen it and, and you'd be shocked at how many times that is the case. Um, maybe you wouldn't, maybe you've had that experience as well, but that's part of what's hurt the, in, the reputation of our industry too. But hopefully we all, we all are, are willing to say, nope, I'm going to, I'm going to make a stand. I'm going to be who I am. And that's all I have at the end of the day is who I am. Well, that's, that's those of us who've had a quality upbringing. That's, that's what we do. We won't manipulate. We won't lie. We won't cheat. We won't control. We won't do it because it's not worth it to us. And, um, you know, to be transparent in a relationship is to keep a healthy relationship. You know, and um, that's a beautiful thing. And, you know, that's how you and I have been. And uh, I, I just see through the years how you've treated people with so much honor, respect and grace. And uh, I just I just hope that more people will will take uh, take your your example and, and do business like that. But, of course, it's, it's a very 
optimistic look at things. <laughs> so, well, you know what? Yeah, unfortunately, we have the reality of experience, and, and there are, but you know what? There are a lot of really wonderful people in this world. That's the thing, that's the thing that I love about our industry, is that, that you see the valiant champions of life involved in our industry i think more than in any other industry people who can who step up and they they are there for each other and they do build these amazing teams and people uh people learn the value of doing things together where we truly do achieve more it's 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 a it's a remarkable industry to be a part of too from that perspective sadly we have a few examples of other things that that are, are not as inspiring and not as not as helpful in our in our personal development I you know sometimes I forget how articulate Marvin is you know because we're such good friends and you know we talk very openly back and forth on the phone and you know when we get lucky we get to see each other in person but um, yeah th this is such important information and as you get this recording as you get this recording please share it with everybody I think it's very important that uh, they hear what Marvin, who doesn't have any skin in the game uh, other than a friendship with me, he's got no skin in the game. And, and he's willing to tell you uh, about the industry and why he thinks LifeWave is, is such a powerful place to be. And okay, if there's no other questions or comments or anything else, thank you very much for being on this call, everybody. And I want to thank my great friend, Marvin Higby, for being on with us. Great insights. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys get to uh, meet Marvin one day. It will be a great uh, privilege for you. He's that kind of guy. And so um, if there's nothing else, then maybe we'll, uh, we'll end the call. And um, I wish you all a beautiful week and uh, go out and do your mission. Thanks very much. Bye-bye now.